Hey, what we're going to do today is uh, work through this solution for a fourth order Runge-Kutta problem. I was working this out for my controls class, so I thought I'd make a video of it. So remember what the Runge-Kutta Runge uh, fourth order method is. It is basically a way to approximate solutions to differential equations. All right, so notice we've got a first order differential equation here. We've got an initial condition and we are going to use h as 0 0.1 and we want to approximate the solution to this initial value problem when x is 1.2. Okay, so that's what we're going to do and before we get started I'm going to write out the equations for the Runge-Kutta method just so we all have them written out. Alright, so first we're going to have y sub n plus 1 n is going to be our iteration and that's going to equal yn plus h over 6 and then k1 plus k or 2k2 plus 2k3 plus k4 and then we need to know the k's right so we need those equations so k1 is going to be our function and we're going to plug in xn yn k2 is going to be our function but this time instead of just xn we're going to have xn plus one half h and then we'll have yn plus one half h k1 and then k3 we're going to have f and then we'll have xn plus one half h and then yn plus one half h k2 and then finally k4 so that'll be our function, and then xn plus h, and then yn plus hk3. Okay, so let's look and see what we have. So first of all, we're going to start at n equals 0. That'll be our first iteration. All right, so let's, let's set n equal to 0. All right, and then let's look up here and see what all we need. So we need y sub 0, right? So our initial y. Okay, well, that's going to come from right here. Okay, because this is our initial condition. So y0 is going to equal 1. And then if you look down for k1, I need x sub 0, right? So that's your initial x. Well, this is really y of x equals 1, right? So that means this 1 is our initial x, okay? So now we've got those two things. H was given as um, 0 0.1, so we don't really have to find that. So now we're ready to go ahead and start working. All right, and this is already in the form that we need. Okay, so let's go ahead and start calculating our K values. All right, so for K1, Remember, n is 0 here. k1 then is going to be our function, and we're going to plug in x0, y0. So our function is 2xy, right? So let's put that over here. So that means we're going to have 2. I need x0, which is 1, y0, which is 1. So that gives me 2, right? Now let's, I mean, this. I don't know why I'm writing this. That's still n equals 0. Let's go to k2. All right, so k2, we're still going to have our function. Now we're going to have x0 plus 1 half times h, and then we're going to have y0 plus 1 half h k1. So now let's plug those in. Our function, remember, is 2xy, so we have 2. Everywhere we have x, we're going to plug in x0 plus 1 half h. Okay, so that means x0 is 1 plus 1 half h, h is 0.1. Now for the y term, I'm going to do y naught plus 1 half h, k1. And then we'll just multiply here because this is just x times y. So y naught is 1 plus 1 half h, so 0.1, and then times k1. Well, k1 was 2, right? So now we have that. And then you go through and do this calculation. So let me calculate that and then see what it is. Okay, so that right there you can see is 2.31, right? So that's what this is going to equal. 
So just plug that into the calculator, you get 2.31. Now we can go ahead and find K3. All right, so now we need our function. N is still zero, right? That hasn't changed, we're still in first iteration. So we're gonna have X naught or X zero plus one half H and then Y zero plus one half H K2. Let's plug those in. So our function is two X Y. So we have the two, X is next, so I'm gonna use the X naught plus one half H. X naught is one from right there, plus 0.5 times, or times 0.1, and then we do the Y term. All right, so we need our initial Y, one plus one half H, 0.1, times K2. So K2 was 2.31. And then plug it into the calculator and let's see what we get. All right, so if we plug all that in, let's see, we get 2.34255. And I'm going to go ahead and keep all of those digits. Because the more digits we carry, the more accuracy we have. Now let's go to our last K, K4. Let's write it out. We're going to have our function. We're going to have X naught plus H and then Y naught plus H K3. Okay, so we're gonna have two times the x. So now it's x naught plus h. So x naught is one, h is 0.1. Multiply that by our new y term. So that's the y naught plus h k3. y naught is one, h is 0.1. And then k3, well, that's that number we just wrote down. So 2.34255. And then let's calculate that one. Okay, so that one we get 2.71536. Now with that, we're done calculating these K values. So now I can get my approximation right here with this one. Okay, so notice it's Y N plus one. So we're gonna have Y one equals Y zero or Y naught plus H over six, and then we have the K1, whoops, let's see, there's that. So K1 plus 2K2 plus 2K3 plus K4. Now we just plug in our numbers. Y naught was one, so we're gonna have one plus H over six, so 0 0.1 over six. K1 was two plus two times K2, which is 2.31 plus two times K3, here's K3. And then finally just plus K4, and that's a 2.71536. Now calculate that, and that'll give us our next approximation. And what we get there is 1.23367. All right, so now we have this, this is Y1. Now, what exactly does that mean? What is this number? Okay, well, this is our first iteration, right? So we worked up to Y1, H is 0.1, okay? So uh, because of that, since we started with an X of one, then that means this value right here, this is the Y value at X equal to 1.1 because we took our initial x and we added h to it okay because think of h as like a time step kind of thing so this is our step size essentially so that means the approximation of our function y at an x value of 1.1 is you know basically approximately equal to 1.23367 so that's what this number gives you so it's approximating your function at the you know, y value or the x value of 1.1. Now this said we want the approximation at 1.2. Now that means we need to do one more iteration. Okay, so because of that we're gonna set n equal to one now. And now we're gonna look at this set of data. Okay, so instead of using the one and the one that we were using before, now we're gonna switch over to these numbers right here. All right, so X1 is 
y1 is 1.23367. Okay, and then we do the same exact process we did up here, except for now we're using these numbers. Okay, so let's go ahead, get k1. All right, so now we have the function. Now we're using x1 and y1, right? Our function is still 2xy. We're going to have 2 times x1, which is 1.1, and then times y1, so 1.23367. And let's calculate that. All right, so that is 2.71407. that now let's go to k2 same thing right same equations but now instead of the n subscript or the zero subscript we're gonna have one right so now we have the function and then we have x1 plus one half h y1 plus one half h k1 right so here's our function so 2 times the x term so that's gonna be x1 which is 1.1 plus one half times h, h is 0.1 still. And then we go to the y term, so here's our y1, plus one half h, and then k1. k1 is this value now, so 2.71407. And let's see what that gives us. Okay, so that one is 3.14956. Moving on to K3, so here's the equation, right? So we just need to change out the uh, subscript, right, because we have the N here. So we're going to have X1 plus 1 half H, and then Y1 plus 1 half H, K2. So 2 and then times 1.1 plus 1 half times 0.1. And then for the Y term, we got Y1. So 1.23367 plus 1 half times 0.1 times K2. And then your K2 is that 3.1496 number. And let's see what that gives. Okay, so we have 3.19964. Okay, right there. That's what we get for that. One more K value up here. So we got our function, now we need x1 plus h, and then y1 plus h, k3. Right, so 2, and then 1.1 plus 0.1, and then our y term will be 1.23367 plus 0.1 times k3, which is that 3.19964. Okay, our last k. That last K value is 3.72872. Now let's get our approximation. So we're going to use this Y equation. N is 1 still. So we have N plus 1, so that gives us uh, Y2. And then that equals Y1 plus H over 6. And then your K1 plus 2K2 plus 2K3 plus K4. And then plug in the values. Y1 is the 1.23367 plus 0.1 over 6. And now let's plug in the K values. 2.71407 for K1 plus 2 times K2, which is right here. 3.14956 plus 2 times K3. So 3.19964. And then finally K4. 3.72872. And then let's do our final calculation. And our final value here is 1.55269. Okay. So what that number is, since we did two iterations, um, then what that gives us, since h is 0.1, is that is our estimate of y at 1.2. Okay, So basically it's 1.55269. So this would be our final approximation there at 1.2.
All right, and I know that because we started here on this iteration at 1.1, h is 0.1, so we just add 1.1 plus 0.1, okay? And then that gives us our approximation. So that's kind of how you can do uh, fourth order Runge-Kutta by hand. Obviously, it's easier if you just throw it in MATLAB or something, code it up. Um, it's easy to code up yourself, and then you can just quickly put in these uh, equations and then get your approximations, right? Super easy to do in, in the code. So hopefully that helps you see how to do that by hand if you're kind of wondering what steps you need to do. But that's what you get for this one. All right, hopefully y'all found that helpful. I will see you guys next time for another example.